Good grief. I've seen ships at sea drift less than this. Good day and welcome to Mike's Radio Repair and Restoration. Today I thought we would take a look at the uh, Cooler Tron 60 megahertz function generator and do a bit of a review on it. Um, it has an awful lot of features. Most of them we don't use for radio, but I'm going to go through them. And we're going to compare to what else is commonly used. As you can see, <clears throat> I have one of these old sweep dial um, signal generator connected to my uh, laboratory grade frequency counter. This is a very accurate instrument. Um, it's got a built in self check with a 10 megahertz crystal controlled oven. Uh, so you can see it's right bang on. But if you watch the frequency coming out of this unit here, it's constantly falling. The ability to do any significant tuning with this just makes you want to rip your hair out. At least it did for me. Um, whether you're trying to uh, sharp tune a 455 kHz IF or you're trying to set up a BFO, doing it accurately, like I just went through with a Heathkit HR10B, where I set the IF up exactly at 1681 kilohertz, which was the manufacturer's spec. The BFO has got to be set at exactly the same frequency in order for the crystal calibrator to really work properly. So if you don't have these frequencies bang on and you got a little bit of error in the IF and a little bit of error in the BFO, what's the point of having these nice features? So, as you can see, as we sit here, this just continues to drift downwards, and it will drift downwards for what seems like evermore. And this is a, a modern uh, attempt at it, uh, of making that type of a analog um, frequency generator, signal generator. Um, I've used them all. You know, there are some laboratory-grade ones out there that aren't too bad, that are stabler than this. But they're hard to find and they're expensive. And yet a modern digital one is much cheaper and much more stable, as we're going to, we're going to look at in just a minute. But down, this one continues to go. Don't waste your money on this type of a, of a, of a generator um, or getting a heat kit off of eBay. It'll just make you tear your hair out and you won't get the results you want to see. This one here now, uh, I believe it's probably got, I think, what they call a jitter of about a tenth of a hertz, which is absolutely nothing. It doesn't, doesn't drift around or float around at all. So as you can see, it's flipping back and forth at 7 megahertz by a tenth of a hertz. And it's going to stay there rock solid and it doesn't move. And now this you can deal with. And this is affordable for the average radio guy to, to buy. Um, so let's take a closer look at what we can do with it. Um, this has an awful lot of functions in it. Like I said before, um, I don't use all of them. Don't even use 10% a, a of what this unit can do. Um, I use it to generate a sine wave at a given frequency. Uh, we can also add a modulated carrier to it, and we can cha change the tone. Um, so those are two functions, is to have a carrier generator or have a carrier with a tone generated. And another key um, item that this unit does, it has a sweep generator on it. So you can sweep a signal between two frequencies, either very slowly or very quickly, whatever you prefer, to be setting up IF crystal filtering, like on this... Uh, H2140X, it needs a sweep generator and a bit of a, a spectrum analyzer to uh, be able to set the IF on it. So for the money, this is a good value, but let's, uh, let's have a look at some of the features. Okay, so let's start it up. When we start it up, you get a splash screen while the processor boots up. And there we go, we boot it up. 
So, change the frequency. You just push the frequency button and it highlights here. And it's shown in hertz, not megahertz. So let's just go like this is one megahertz at this point in time. So that's easy enough to set. And then you can adjust the output. Now, one of the things you have to be careful with that I don't like, and it's just probably a software boo-boo, when it first boots up, it's emitting a signal at 5 volts peak to peak, which is kind of sort of high. So before you plug it into anything, you can turn it right down, and you can dial this thing right down to, to nothing. So that's very, very handy. And uh, so the next um, port portion that we often use is we can add a modulator to the carrier. We can modulate it to 80% with 500 hertz. You know, we can, we can change the frequency. We can change the depth or intensity of the modulation, um, which is quite handy. I, my ears prefer 500, or you can turn it off. And uh, now we've got a, uh, and there's another thing I should mention. It has two channels, so you can generate two separate signals at once. Although, again, that's not a function that I really use, but maybe some point we'll find one. You can have a start and a stop frequency for your sweep. Like, let's say you want to sweep a 455 kilohertz IF. So you start at 450, you end at 460, and you can have it uh, adjust to how much time it takes to sweep back and forth between those two points and whether it starts uh, uh, small and goes to big or big and goes to small. Um, line mode for sweep, and then the last is you can turn it on. So I think these are packing around 200 bucks now, maybe cheaper. Um, they're quite a value. Um, I mean, I, I have laboratory grade signal generators, but for the average hobby guy who wants to learn to restore tube radios and not spend a lot of money, like this is this is the ticket. So let's set up the sport, poor man spectrum analyzer and have a look at its output. Um, I suppose, well, I was going to look at the output of the other one, but it, it's just a mess. And it drifts around and it puts spurs all up and down and all over the band and generates noises where this generates one reasonably clean signal and doesn't fill your radio up with noise. So uh, give me a minute and let's set up a set up a spectrum analyzer and have a look at its output. Okay, if my audio is a bit funky, it's because I had to move my microphone in order so that you could hear what was going to go on our dem demonstration here. We're looking at a. Uh, a 450 kilohertz carrier, um, and it's nice and clean. Uh, it's not drifting around. There's no spurs, uh, so that makes great for uh, setting up your VFO, and it makes great for accuracy for sure. Um, so I don't know if you can hear a little bit of noise in the background, but you can turn the carrier level down. And I'm going down now. You can hear the noise picking up. So we can go down to the weak signal work. And we can come up to full quiet. Um, now we can also modulate the carrier. I'm hoping you can hear that tone. You can see that's about 100% modulation. And uh, if you wanted to change the modulation frequency for whatever it is you're doing, you certainly can. That's a thousand hertz, 11. So very handy. That's very nice, very clean. Uh, again, a lot better than the old Heath Kit or Ico or the old Drifters. So we're going to look at the sweep generator next. We can just turn it on here. And you can see what it's doing here, but this is not the right piece of software to be looking at this with. So I'm going to just uh, change software and uh, we'll come back and look at it on a better piece of software so you can understand what's going on. All right, well here we're looking at a little bit more of a traditional spectrum analyzer piece of software. And this is our uh, 450 kilohertz carrier, nice and clean as you can see. And if I turn on our sweep generator, you can see again the signal sweeping back and forth and you wonder how useful is that? Well, let's change the setting on the software. This is kind of a, a peak hold. Uh, view of what the generator is putting out 
and over time it's going to generate a pattern as you can see here it's generating a nice clean pattern i'm going to put up a picture in a few minutes imagine if you were had to tune a, a crystal filter uh, for a given pattern um, in an if and say hammerland or an sx100 you can uh, pump this signal swept through the if monitor the output and tune to get what the manufacturer wants that particular notch filter to look like. I'll put up a picture for a better understanding, but this is a very handy tool here. And you can see now it's sweeping between, showing on the on the scale here, 450 to, uh, to yeah, 450 to uh, 460. So it's sweeping that 10 kilohertz span of the band. So uh, anything that gets filtered out would ultimately change that pattern accordingly. So again, very, very handy. And I'll uh, throw some pictures up here for you to look at. This is the manual of the uh, Hammerland uh, HQ140XA. And as you can see here, um, they have a crystal filtering system here that has uh, five distinct settings. And there's a very long procedure to go through here. And having a sweep generator and a spectrum analyzer to uh, go through and make sure that all of these five settings are follow falling within the uh, uh, manufacturer specifications is very handy. There's really not another way to do it. You, um, a lot of these radios get misaligned because they don't have uh, the ability to uh, run a sweep generator or a tracking generator with a, with a spectrum analyzer. Um, to get these all properly set up. So uh, it's very handy to do that. It's kind of an advanced step, and uh, the new guys aren't going to soak this up too quick, but eventually you will. Um, but the nice part about it is, is you'll have the functionality in your cheap signal generator to get the job done. So it's nice to be able to have that functionality. So in summary, a great big no to this type of generator for me anyways and i'm just trying to save you all some aggravation this is a fairly new one you can buy this on amazon but don't run from it or the old icos or the old heath kits they all drift around too much to be really useful they just frustrate you as for the uh, amazon and ebay cooler tron unit i don't think you can beat its functionality for the price by the time you get a Heath kit off of eBay that's in decent shape and have it shipped to you and restore it, there won't be a big difference in money. So it's better just to do the right thing in the in in the start is uh, to get a decent unit. Um, starting out, you're probably swamped and learning, and uh, uh, the last thing you want to do is trying to be chasing a signal up and down a band, trying to uh, <coughs> align a, a receiver is just. I spent many years doing it, and as you can tell, I'm a little bit bitter, <laughs> bitter on the subject when you can do something like this that's much better. Um, you know, the, even the sweep function for uh, sweeping uh, low-pass filters to find out where they are really are. Uh, the guys who like making their own inductors for crystal radios and coils to be able to sweep an LCR tuned circuit and find out where it's resonating. Um, you know, and you use a piece of software like this uh, is very handy. So uh, um, I'm sure it's not the most highest quality unit out there being $200 or less, but uh, uh, for the price and for what it does, it's great bang for the buck. And uh, uh, I highly recommend it, certainly for the new folks starting out rather than buying a, a multiple thousand dollar piece of equipment to uh, get the job done. This is, uh, this is more than adequate for the home hobbyist. So if you like this video and other videos we've done here, and uh, uh, we could certainly use you to subscribe. So if you'd hit that subscribe button, uh, we'd really appreciate it. So until the next time, we'll see you again.